That really was a shock to them. Why? Because of our past teaching. We have been taught wrongly. We have not been taught the Word. We've been taught somebody's opinion, somebody's ideas. The Scripture says that they believe Philip's preaching. They believe what he said about the Word because of the signs and the miracles and the wonders which he did. Which he did. He did them, of course, by the power of God which was in him. And you and I have no power of ourselves, but our power is of him. And remember, if it's Christ in us, the hope of glory, if it is he who is in us, we have what the word of God says we have. So this man looked at Peter and John, and verse 5 says, He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and what? You can't give anything if you haven't got it. You can't give anything if you haven't got it. In other words, you can't speak in tongues except you're born again of God's Spirit. You've got to have the ability first before you can manifest the operation. Right? Peter said, Silver and gold we haven't any. But what I've got, such as I have, the ability to minister to you, to pray with you, to help you, this, Peter said, such as I've got, I'll give to you. Therefore, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and watch. There are all the manifestations involved in here, and I'm not going to teach on this early section. I'm simply getting you warmed up for where I want to finally get to. But tremendous truths in here. And I want to answer the question which I provoked a moment ago, and that is that Jesus knew by revelation, word of knowledge, that the man who was laid daily at the gate of the temple, he knew by word of knowledge that that man was not to be healed because he would not believe. Not that it wasn't God's will to heal him, but his time of believing, his time of believing had not what? Arrived, had not come, had not gotten to that place where he could really bite his teeth into it, so to speak, and clamp on to it and know that it was a reality. But sometime later, Peter and John coming along, that's the time. I think all of us have experienced the same times in our lives when we have had something we'd like to believe for and we couldn't get the results immediately. We kept on believing and trying to believe and working in the area of believing or doing something. And then all at once, all at once, we just click. We just know, knew that we believed, and when we believed, there it was, we received. And that's why Jesus did not minister to this man. It is not that he did not love him. It's simply that he knew by revelation he would not believe or could not believe at that time. Therefore, he passed him by. But Peter and John one day were walking along, and Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Scripture says in Acts 2, he spoke in tongues. <laughs> And so did John, and so did all the rest of the apostles, and so did the apostle Paul. And as I said to the class this week again, it seems to me that if any minister says he is a Christian, that he believes the Bible, then it behooves him to speak in tongues, because I know that there is no minister living who has ever had as much of the revelation from the Lord, the abundance of it, as the apostle Paul. And if the Apostle Paul spoke in tongues, I believe that we who are ministers ought to be speaking in tongues too. We need it. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians 14, it says this is a commandment of the Lord, not only to the ministers, but to all believers who are born again of God's Spirit. So he takes him, verse 7, Peter took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received what? And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising whom? God. Praising God. And all the people in that temple saw him walking and praising God. Verse 10. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, 
and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, the word held in the text literally should have been translated stayed by the side of or accompanied would be a good synonym. Accompanied. The lame man which was healed accompanied Peter and John. I think that's the best synonym to be used here to describe it. All the people ran together unto them in the porch that's called Solomon's greatly what? Wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or what? Holiness. We had made this man to walk. Was it Peter's holiness that made it this man to walk? Was it Peter's power? No, but it was the power of God in Peter and Peter having the boldness to work it. The church is loaded with power but hasn't got the knowledge or the boldness to work it. The scripture says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. We need the knowledge of the word before we can work it. But once we have that knowledge, then we need the boldness and the courage to work it. In other words, this whole thing has to tie together. The God of Abraham, verse 13, and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified, has glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up. Whom? Who delivered up? To whom was he speaking? To the Jews who were assembled in the temple at that time. He said to them, whom ye, what? Delivered up. And I just read recently and heard recently that in a certain meeting in a foreign country they decided they had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Somebody's wrong. The word of God says they did. And denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye, verse 14, that denied the Holy One and just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath what? There it is. Whom God hath raised from what? Whereof we are what? Now if anybody's going to get saved, he has to have faith, which cometh by what? Hearing, which cometh by the word of what? And he's going to have to confess the Lord Jesus and believe that God did what? Now how could they have heard except somebody taught. And Peter, on the occasion of this mighty miracle of the healing of the lame man at the temple gate, he, when he preached to them, when he talked to them, talked to them about the Prince of Life whom God did what? Raise again from the dead. He taught them the resurrection. He taught them that Christ arose because nobody can be born again of God's Spirit except he believed that God raised him from the dead. And verse 16, his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him, the faith which is by Jesus Christ. How did faith come? by Jesus Christ. And this faith, which is by or on account of Jesus' coming, hath given him, this lame man, this perfect soundness. Perfect soundness. Perfect soundness is perfect wholeness. W-H-O-L-E-N-E-S-S. -E -S. Perfect wholeness. You know, a person could be healed without being made whole. There were ten lepers, weren't there? Uh, nine or ten, how many? Ten? Uh, all got healed. But only one was made what? That's whole. That's tremendous. We're not going to work this field, but just these things all gel in your fellow's heart when he works the word. 
There must then be a tremendous difference between a person being healed and a person being made whole. This man was not only healed, but he was made perfectly whole. And now, brother, in verse 17, I know that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has, Christ has, Christ has, so what? Verse 19, repent ye therefore and be what? Amen. When a person repents, he's converted. When he repents, he's converted. Now to repent is not to confess your sin. It is to confess the Savior from sin, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the greatness here. He had taught them about the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, don't look upon us or upon our power as if we did it. But this Jesus whom he crucified, him God has raised, he is the Lord, and this one you must believe in. 